Broadcasting live from the Vegas Video Network studios, just steps from the Las Vegas Strip, it's Talk Tales! And now our host, she's our very own kaleidoscope of talent! What? It's Kelly Clinton! Welcome home. Thank you so much. We have such a full live audience in the studio today. My name is Kelly Clinton hyphen Holmes. I am the host of Talk Tales on the Vegas Video Network. Oh yeah. I've missed you all, but um, um, we're back and we have such an exciting show. Um, we, our guest today on Talk Tales is someone that uh, I don't think I've ever been this nervous before the show because um, I, I look up to him, I admire him, I wake up to him. Do you know what I'm saying? Seriously, usually we, we make a call to get the guest. I had to sleep with this guy <laughs> for like eight years. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, now actually he said yes right away. He, uh, the first time I saw this gentleman, he was at Harris Hotel headlining in his showroom. They named the showroom after him. He's traveling all over the world. He's got so many projects going on. He's my favorite entertainer. Mr. Clint Holmes is here today. <laughs> what are you talking about? This is when we should bring back the catchphrase. Let's see if we can all remember it. <laughs> Clint Holmes is here today. What? what? Are you kidding me? See, it's still alive. It's still powerful. <laughs> All right, before we meet Clint, I want you to meet our Talk Tales Orchestra. Say hello to Kenny Davidson. Yay! Hi, Kenny. Yeah, you know what? We're going to have to get a camera shot of you from over here because you're going to need a chiropractor soon if the series gets picked up. But you look sharp. You look good. You Thank are you. playing at Don't Tell Mamas That's right. uh, this Wednesday mm -hmm. and either Friday and or then Saturday. This Saturday. And then this Sunday. And you're also uh, starting at a new club, and yep. uh, it's called Masters Mas Ocean, Masters o Ocean Club. Easy for you to say. Easy Why for don't me I to try say. it again for you? Exactly. Masters Association Academy <laughs> Clydrahine Corticine on Vegas Boulevard. Exactly. All right, we'll get back to you with the correct information, but <laughs> he's all over town. That's Kenny Davidson. Yeah. Now, also, we have running the show today, Jacob and Tara. Can we give them a little love? Hi, what a nice shot. Great to see you. Tara is new, and she's very young, isn't she? I don't think we should put her on camera anymore. <laughs> no, I really I don't have a problem with you at all, Tara. <laughs> Thank Welcome you. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. She's lovely. She came right up to me and gave me a big hug. Um, this is... Uh, the part of the show where I usually turn and introduce Scott Whitney, our producer, but he's not here today, and I'm just not really not here today, and I'm wondering if everything's okay between Scott and I. <laughs> yes, yes, cue the music. You know, Scott, I have the utmost respect for you. I, I'm honored to do the show. I remember when you first asked me, it was so personal and so intimate in a way. I think it was a text. <laughs> I think you said something sweet and endearing like, no one else wants to do it. Are you available? <laughs> yes, I said, yes. I'll be there. What time? He said, three months from today. <laughs> Anyway, I think he's just got another booking, and he'll be back, hopefully. So, hello from inside the computer to you, Scott Whitney, owner of Vegas Video Network. All right, I'm going to miss talking to you, but back to me. <laughs> I just got back from a 13-day cruise that, yes, my husband and I uh, first flew to Iceland, which is uh, just really cold. And I heard that, I and mean, the ship was actually beautiful. It was, uh, it was, like, it was the Seabourn, right? Sea, Seabourn, and the name of the ship was Soldren. Yes, thank you, invisible person in the guest chair. The Soldren. And anyway, we were, put, we were in a, bit, a beautiful suite. My husband was headlining uh, on the ship, and I was a special guest star. 
And there was nothing we couldn't have on the ship. It was so fabulous. We could have caviar in the room any time of day. We, we were eating, drinking champagne. Uh, there was breakfast in the morning just delivered to our room. It was, I mean, there were people on the ship as well, and they were really nice. We got to know them. <laughs> I have to remember those beautiful people. But all I know is by the time we were leaving the ship, I was ready to sing, all of me, why not take all of me? Yes, it's back to the gym right away. I'll tell you more about that. We'll ask Clint how his experience on the ship was. I know that we had a great time, and for the first time, we did something so romantic. Not what you think. We did crossword puzzles together. Yeah. And we feel closer to each other. Clint has so many exciting things going on, and I know the audience here in the in the studio is excited to, to hear what's going on. So we'll be right back after this with Talk Tales, our special guest, Clint Holmes. You know, one of the things I like best about the Vegas Video Network are the people. There are no divas here. Everyone is exactly the same off camera as they are on. Hey, guys, what's uh, Cocktail of the Week this week? You know what? I'll let you know what it is when it's time for you to know what it is. Why don't you get off the stage and get back in your production hall? Oh my God. You know what, and tell Cheap Ass Whitney to get us some decent brand liquor. This hobo off-wrap crap ain't cutting it. God, idiots. Totally. Welcome back to Talk Tales. I <laughs> felt like <laughs> a higher power for a moment there. Yeah. Welcome back. My guest today is Mr. Clint Holmes, who has just returned from a beautiful cruise from Iceland all the way to Canada, all the way to our studio right here right. today. He's got a big weekend coming up. Please say hello to headliner Clint Holmes. Hi. 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 How was the cruise? The cruise was great. Yeah. We had we, a good time. You know, it's we? funny. We, we've been talking so much about it uh, and what we did we did crossword puzzles, which we did. Is, it sounds very mundane, but for us, it was, it was like we were cheering each other. We, they, they had this beautiful library where everyone <laughs> would sit and quietly read and quietly, you know, drink coffee or tea, and we would be doing a crossword puzzle, and we'd go, yes! And people would look. <laughs> and the, and say, none of the other couples <laughs> high-fived. We were like, yeah, right. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah baby. A yeah. four-letter word for stop. I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel closer to you after the it was, it was It was strangely fun. It was great. Now, yeah. this is, I mean, you. it's been years since you've been uh, doing the cruise. You did a, a lot of them back in the day. Back in the 90s. Right, in the yeah. 90s? You did, like, how many weeks a year did you travel? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I probably did. 20 cruises a year at that point, yeah. Were they like the cruise no. we were on? No, 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 no. They were, they were lovely, but this was very special. This really one special. We were on, yeah. Interesting people. I used to, uh, you know, it was great to, have you, to be on with you. It would have been a very long two weeks in Iceland without you, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, honestly. But uh, the scenery was beautiful. Remember the night the, the captain said we're going to be navigating our way through icebergs? Remember uh, that? Yeah. I do remember that. Yeah, that was, that was a night that my wife looked at me and said, can we get off? Is it <laughs> possible to get Is there off? anywhere where we can get off the ship? <laughs> it was great, and they loved you. And I think in your life right now, I think you've always been an amazing performer. But you are at the top of your game right Thank you. now. Thank you. And the people, these people have seen everything. The, yeah. the people on this cruise have seen the world, and the, all the great entertainers, they all had stories. And they were so uh, appreciative of you, and they couldn't give you enough praise. Did you sell all of the CDs? Not all of them, but the guy told me that we sold more than any other act, which is crazy. But uh, yeah, it was it was they special. I don't really know, there was something special about it, and they loved you, especially the older guys. No. Yeah. No, no, no. The older guys. They 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 would do things like this. They'd come up to her and go, ah. Oh. And the and, and the and the wives would go, darling. Darling, stop it. That happened more than once. Well, anyway, they were lovely people, and I was kind of young on that ship. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> that, young many exactly, places. That's right. But now, uh, at one point, I mean, everyone knows that we're, we're married now. Not everyone. Five years. Well, they all do now. Everyone on the Internet knows that. But you took me back and showed me uh, all the way to New York, to Farnham, New York, yeah. where, where you uh, I was brought grew up. up. Mm -hmm. And you showed me the first house you ever lived in. I did. And it was, how big was this? It was oh. a shack. 
It, it was, was a, a little. It was a brick shack. Yes. The uh, there was no bathroom. There was a there was a, a, a outhouse. Mm. Uh, seriously, and I remember we our, our baths were in a big tin thing in front of uh, uh, we had a fireplace because we didn't have heating. Remember, this is Buffalo near mm. Buffalo, New York, and uh, yeah, that house was pretty amazing. That when I think back, I mean, do you, do you, do you say to yourself that th I am the guy that started out with those humble beginnings? And now you've seen the world. You've you've had so many experiences and met probably everyone you had admired. What was when was the first uh, moment that you or the most significant time in the beginning of your career that you said, "Wow, I I, I suppose I'm really getting there." Uh, well, my dream. If I had time to think about this, I, I would probably come up with a different answer. But uh, I think when I met Cosby, um, because uh, I I opened for him in Buffalo. Uh, and I remember going into his dressing room, because uh, this is Bill Cosby, and this was, you know, the Huxtables were, were on. In fact, it, as it was pre-Huxtables. He was hosting the, the Tonight Show, the Johnny Carson Show, on a lot of Monday nights. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I went into his dressing room after the first show, which was successful, and said, would you take me on the Johnny Carson Show sometime? <laughs> and he said, no. <laughs> And he said, you see, I work with many people, and if I take one, I have to take everyone. So uh, I gave myself an A-plus for asking, and, and, and it was a year later th that he invited me on, and we did The Tonight Show. So I think Cosby was probably the first major star who became a part of my life. And he was a big part of your life. He, yeah. was, he, became, he was a mentor and, and a great friend, and he taught you a lot. What, he gave you a piece of advice once that I'd love when you tell that story. Oh, I don't know which piece of advice. Um, when, oh, uh, tell your story? That one? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I would do, do shows, and, and Bill, Bill Fain is here today, and Billy and I would, would be doing these shows, and, and we would always be very well received, and I would be very puffed up and feeling mm -hmm. great, and I'd be bowing and bowing, and he would come on stage, and he would put the mic over here, and he would say, stop begging. Mm. Tell your story. And I would go, what? You know, and uh, I learned eventually what he meant. Bill, Bill Cosby is a genius. Yes. I mean, a true genius. Uh, and we, we saw him recently yeah. together, yeah. and uh, he's just as amazing he's just as today amazing. as he was. And, and there's, a, uh, there's a lot more to say about Bill Cosby. Is it done? Are we yeah. done with the segment already? We're not done with the show. Honey. Okay, the segment. We've got a whole because I show wanted to for finish you. that thing. Yeah, I know, I but see, back. just like home, I want to interrupt <laughs> <laughs> and get my part in. And my part is yes. Don't go away. We'll be right back on Talk Tales with Clint Holmes. Wow. Traditional <laughs> media believes that after about three minutes, you'll tune out. Most Vegas media companies think if it doesn't jiggle, you won't tune in. At the Vegas Video Network, we think both are wrong. The Vegas Video Network is the first and only live online broadcast network that specializes in insider news and expert views about Vegas. We combine great storytelling with the ability to watch when and where you want on your computer, mobile device, or television. Discover the real Las Vegas. Visit VegasVideoNetwork.com. Stop. Get your hand off my leg. Stop. <laughs> Stop it. Welcome back to Talk Tales. Uh, I'm your host, Kelly Clinton, and I have such a special guest today, Mr. Clint Holmes. Uh, if you want to, if you, uh, get, no, you can't be in the, stop okay, touching sorry. me. Okay, sorry. Yes. Anyway, anyway, actually the show is on radio on Saturday afternoons on KSHP 1400 AM. Um, and if you don't get to catch the show while we're streaming live, you can always see the show on VegasVideoNetwork.com. And you can leave us an email if you'd like, Vegas Video, wait, Talk Tales, sorry, I do this every weekend, Scott's not here to yell at me, Talk Tales at VegasVideoNetwork.com. You can also leave us a web-based voicemail, just go on the site and follow the instructions and press record, Maybe you might make it on the air. You could ask Clint Holmes a question right now as we're streaming live on live chat. Welcome back. That takes way Clint too Holmes. much time, don't you think? I know. Let's back to your story. Okay. You're talking about Bill Cosby. Yeah. And he, the great advice he gave you to tell your story. Stop begging and tell your story. Basically. What did he mean, stop begging? Stop begging because uh, most entertainers really love the applause, mm -hmm. and so we bow forever, you know. And what he was saying is, you know, it's like, it's like the guy who, who scores a touchdown and has to do a five minute dance, as opposed to the guy who scores a touchdown, drops the ball, and runs back. You kind of go, right. act like you've been there. 
you know. Right. Uh, so that's what he was saying to me, you know, act like you've been there before. And telling your own story w became uh, my version of hit records, because as you know, I only have <laughs> one uh, real hit record. <laughs> so so, so what, what did I have to offer uh, besides being a good singer? What did I have to offer the audience? And it was my story. And that's when I began to tell my story, you know, right. about mom and dad and the family and all that. So Bill was, was a teacher and um, oh, he was great. He still is. And, you, and Bill Fain is here as well today. You have more than one Bill in your life. And you guys work together. He spoke about you when he was on the show. Mm -hmm. Your best friend since college. Yep, absolutely. And he points out that he graduated. And, uh, and you were <laughs> worked together. <laughs> Worked together for 35 years or more. And we still work together. Yeah, you, you know? do. But Billy and I have, you talk about traveling the world. You know? yeah. I mean, Bill and I have traveled the world. And the thing that Bill and I have, and, and when we were working together on a consistent basis, had was not only the music, but we loved the same things. We loved tennis. We loved sports. We loved great wine. Clothes. We loved great food. We loved clothes. We loved cigars in those days. Uh -huh. And we would get off the ship and immediately search for T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, and so, I mean, you know, the, the, the thing is that, that our relationship was built on, on friendship and, and the music was a byproduct of it in a way. Yeah. 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 Really special friend. Yeah, Maybe. absolutely. And still. And he was know. best man at our, our, at our wedding. wedding. That's but right. anyway, that's boring stuff, isn't it? Maybe not. Okay. So, so I know Billy was a, a, a very important part of your life. You've worked with several entertainers. You've met some of your idols. Yeah. Tell me mm -hmm. about that. Well, I mean... Uh, uh, I met Sammy Davis and, and, and got to know him a bit, which, you know, thinking back to when I was a little kid sitting in front of our little black and white television set, that it kind of always seems like a miracle that, I, that those, some of those people, Belafonte has become a friend, mm -hmm. uh, Sammy, um, you know, was, was a friend, Cosby, pe people like that, Joan Rivers, uh, another mm -hmm. very important person in my right. life, um, became a friend. Uh, and, and it's kind of crazy, you know. Uh, and so, and, 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 and the beat goes on, you know, we, we go to New York a lot and, yeah. and now we, we meet people like Audra McDonald and, and Norm Lewis who are, who are big Broadway stars and Christine Ebersole mm -hmm. who's coming here, you know, and Barbara Cook. I, I'm in awe of, of, of brilliance, you know that. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you why is New York so important because I know you've, you've worked there before, you had yeah. a t television show there yeah, I did. called New York at Night. Why is uh, New York so important for you to to make your presence known and work there. And I think like Las Vegas, it's the epitome of what we do uh, in, a different, in a different way. Uh, Las Vegas is the epitome of what we do in terms of nightclubs. Uh, I think New York is the epitome of what we do in terms of theater. Uh, and they, they are obviously interconnected but different. So to me, you know, we go to see a Broadway show and you think about the fact that these, these people on that stage act, sing, dance, uh, and, and do it every single night to perfection eight times a week mm -hmm. and, and I, I just it's like amazing to me you know the consistency of energy the consistency the commitment um, yeah so I, I, I you know I, I mean I love living here and I, I love going there I know you worked on your own show about your life your mm -hmm. story mm -hmm. uh, it was at one point called comfortable shoes That's right then just another man right. jam and uh, I know and my you, own song it, and my own real, song yeah. it changed yeah. And I know that you want to do that story. Would you also be a part of a Broadway show that's already established? Would you want to do that? Is that one of your dreams? It, it's, it's not one of my dreams, but I, if I was going to go on Broadway, look, you, you, you take what's out there, I, um, if it was the right thing, but I'd like to either create a role, originate a role. Uh, I, they were years ago talking to me about doing Phantom of the Opera, mm -hmm. and my manager said, who's doing it on Broadway now? And I said, Michael what's his name? Michael Crawford. I said, mm -hmm. Michael Crawford. And he said, no, he hasn't been doing it for seven years. Uh. And I said, well, who is doing it? And I had no idea who was doing it. And he said, well, there it is. Uh. You know, uh, originating a role and f coming in after someone are two very different things. So it would have to be the right situation because I'd rather originate a role or, uh, mm -hmm. or at least re-originate a role. You know? Well, you know, I would be in the front row supporting you all the way. Uh, in between my shows, of course, on Broadway. But we're going to be right back. Let's find out what Clint Holmes does when he's not performing on Talk Tales right after this. Crossword puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> this is David Ivey for Pub Crawl. It's funny because... Is David? Oh, you should, you should, no, you should just leave it on. Hi, I'm David Ivey for Pub Crawl, and you're watching the Vegas Video Network. And scene. 
I love you so much, honey. I really, I care about you. And just the fact that you were on the... Oh, welcome back <laughs> to Talk Tales with Clint Holmes, my husband and someone I admire. And Aren't I your best friend? Too? You're my best friend. Yes. You are. I have, I have, well, you have a best friend. You have Bill Fain. Yes. And I have Lena Prima, who's been my best friend since high school. Okay. And they actually introduced us. That's Isn't really that, that. You know, when you think about that, that's pretty darn amazing. And we were friends for years, and then other stuff happened, and here we are. Boy, it's quiet in here. <laughs> <laughs> I was just I trying to keep need a drink, come to think of it. Why don't to, we just open this? I was this trying stuff. to keep the story short. <laughs> now, I know I, uh, people, you know, we, they know that we love to, to go to shows and movies right. and all. What are some of the things that you do? I mean, we love to perform. That's our, it's like we have one track mind. Right. But really, you have many other interests. Tell us about what Clint Holmes does when he's not gigging. Well, bocce ball would be the first what? thing that comes to mind. Bocce ball. <laughs> it never happens. Um, well, you know I love tennis. Yeah. I love to play and I love to watch it. I love, uh, you know, that's been something that I, I learned to play tennis in the Bahamas uh, when I was in my 20s because Sidney Poitier oh, came to my show. He's name and, dropping. Well, yeah, he came to my show and I, I went and, and met him and he said s to me, do you play tennis? And I'd never played tennis in my life and I looked right at him and I said, yes. <laughs> and he said, well, meet me at the Ocean Club tomorrow and we'll play tennis. Then I went, oh. And I, but I, I, I fell in love with it. He, he, I, I had to admit after, after that that I had never played. But he said, come over anyway. And I met his pro, and I started to play tennis. And it became very quickly a passion. So you know I love tennis. I know you love tennis, and I, and I know that you've actually had the, you, the opportunity to play with people like John McEnroe. <laughs> Isn't that well, true? It's, I mean, it's, people it's play don't with is, is, you know, I was in, in, within the same space. Uh, and there was a yellow ball involved, but I did not play <laughs> much. I mean, that's one thing that you, you learn yeah. when, you, when you play tennis with someone like that. It's not the same game. It's, it's kind of was like... Was it a celebrity match? It was, was a celebrity it? tournament that, uh, that the winners, the celebrity winners, got to play uh, four games with John uh, McEnroe and Jimmy Connors. Uh -huh. And since Jimmy Connors was, was my first tennis hero, I said, I'll play with Jimmy Connors against Alan Thicke, who was the other celebrity winner, and uh, John McEnroe. So I asked McEnroe to hit me his kick serve, which is, you know, was a huge weapon in those days in tennis. And he said, I don't want to embarrass you. And I said, that's fine. I, you know, it's, <laughs> I've it's been okay. embarrassed I, before. I've been embarrassed before, and I'll be embarrassed again. But I'd like to see how hard it is to actually return that serve. Well, I'll tell you how hard it was. Uh, it knocked the racket out of my hand. Oh, and the boy. ball, uh, uh, the ball flew up into the stands, and the racket went clattering on the court, and uh, everyone laughed. And Jimmy <laughs> Connors walked over to me and said, "Don't feel bad. I've been trying to return that serve for 15 years." That was, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was our bleep machine. Yeah, the, I the do, bleep. Before we go to we have a live chat question. I just want oh. to show everyone <laughs> that Clint Holmes doesn't just have awards for singing and acting and dancing. This, tell us about this trophy quickly. I won this trophy in Monte Carlo in the finals playing against uh, Ashok Amitraj and Prince Albert of Monaco. Wow. And uh, we won uh, that day, and this is the total sum of my tennis uh, trophies. No, actually, it. I have news for you. While that was in my bag, it oh. met another trophy and had this. Yeah, I don't remember this trophy. one. What's that? Uh, this was the, this is, uh, this was another, ten uh, this was in Los Angeles. I won a, uh, 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 a tennis tournament, L L A, a celebrity tennis tournament, but this is the, the one. The point is, you are a winner, Clint Holmes. Now, we have a live chat question. Who do we have, Jacob? <laughs> Tara? Actually, Jacob? yeah. Tara? Sam is asking what Clint's long-term goal is. Ah, what is your long-term goal? I know you have lots of things you still you want to do. That's a funny question right now because we're, we've been talking a lot about that. Um, if someone were to wave a magic wand uh, and said you could do one thing right now, it would be Broadway. Ah. You know, uh, and, and, and I don't even, I mean, not that that's the end, not that I, uh, if I get to do a Broadway show that I would stop. It's just that that's one of those things that's, that's been a carrot to me for a long time, mm -hmm. you know, because um, I, I respect the, the, the craft so much. So I'd like to do a Broadway show. My goal is to continue to grow an audience mm -hmm. so that I can sing for the rest of my life. Speaking of singing. Yeah. Can you do a little bit? I know we don't have a lot of time, but we, we can't have Clint Holmes on and not hear your beautiful voice. Oh, the Smith Center. Yeah. This weekend. Yes, my this goodness, weekend. With Mel Torme's son, James, ah. is going to be my special guest, and he's amazing. 
great scat singer in the tradition of his father. So James and I will be there uh, this weekend, just Friday and Sunday. Saturday night, we're wedding singers. Yeah, we're wedding singers right in that at, room. At a very special uh, wedding. So are, are you playing, Kenny? Okay. So this is a good song for you. You made me leave my happy home. You're my dream. You took my love and you're not gone. Not going? I'm glad I fell for you. Love brings such misery and pain. Sing it to us, Glenn. I guess I'll never be the same since I fell for you. Can I buy you dinner? It will be the first time. <laughs> well, it's too bad. I didn't say cook. And it's so sad that I will be at the bootlegger eating dinner while you work. That's tonight. Yeah. Yeah. 